Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Sci-Tech Guru. In this video, I will talk about the, what are the top 5 issues which I did face in the Moto H20 on the day 1 itself. This is a question which has been requested by a few of my subscribers asking me to point out what are the problems with the device because in online everywhere you can actually find all the positive things but very few people will be telling us uh, what is happening with the real facts what are the disadvantages that is what i'm going to exactly concentrate friends and don't worry next week i'll try to cover up what are the advantages and everything so i'm trying to show you what are the facts that is what i'm trying to describe in this video let's see what are the few issues which I did recognize in this Moto H20 on the day one of using with this device, which I feel slightly kind of uh, not okay. There is a thing I thought of explaining in this video. So first thing is the camera. So camera of this phone has one right megapixel camera lens, but still, even though it has got very good camera, but still I'm really disappointed with the camera quality it has got. It's not performing as great as expected. So when it comes to the dark mode, it's completely not great at all in the dark mode yes so it's not good so let me just show you a couple of dark mode which are taken shots it's not good friends as you can see exactly when it comes to dark mode the other device like oneplus nord 2 and iq7 device they did very good job so same camera shot in the oneplus nord 2 in the night mode you can see how much difference it's there between these both phones you cannot even see anything but in the oneplus nord 2 you can see that so that's the thing not only with the night mode shots even few of the shots are not that great but telephoto lens is really good telephoto lens is good i need to do intense uh, testing as well on this topic but regarding night mode i can definitely clarify that it's not that uh, great at this moment but rest of the things are really good uh, i mean in terms of the colors and saturation levels everything was pretty good and all this kind of shots i did take in the indoor environment i need to do the outdoor testing as well but the initial impressions about the night mode shots are not that satisfactory in this kind of price range for thirty thousand rupees what you're paying for and second problem is with the connectivity so you might be wondering, the phone has got 5 5G, I mean a lot of 5G bands, I think 11 5G bands and uh, what else the problem will be there? Problem is with the Wi-Fi connectivity, not with the 4G plus, 4G plus I don't have any problem because I can actually get the carrier aggregation, 2cc, 3cc, no issues. But with the Wi-Fi connection, some strange problem, I mean I'm getting very slow speeds in the Moto H20 at this moment connected to the same kind of Wi-Fi network at same time with other phones is a poco f3 gt which i connected to the same kind of wi-fi network as you can see friends i'll let you do the speed test between both phones you will be able to understand what is happening exactly let me try to do one by one not at same time one by one so in the moto h20 i'm not getting that kind of high speeds network my wi-fi plan is about close to 91 mbps of speeds but i'm not reaching that kind of 91 it's kind of stuck around 50 and 60 around that city it's not going up so right now let me just show you exactly what is happening in the poco f3 gt at this moment now you'll be able to understand so same wi-fi network at same time i'm trying to test at same location as you can see the speedometer how it went it's it's like zoom fast as you can see exactly what is happening here and then i started to do some kind of research by going into the settings option which is available here you can actually see what is available as well in terms of the 144 transmit link speed which is present here slightly in the moto h20 if I did tap on this transmit link speed, I'm getting about transmit link speed of 52, sometimes 72, sometimes 108 Mbps, some, somewhere around that. I'm not sure why it's inconsistent. Then I did do another thing. I did create the Wi-Fi tethering from MI Linux device and I connected this phone to this 2.4 GHz and it was able to perform slightly kind of okay, but not that great. So overall in terms of the Wi-Fi, slightly kind of problem maybe you might be experiencing because I did experience on the day one. That is the reason I'm trying to address all these kind of things. What I did experience, I'm trying to show you the proof as well. And you cannot do the Wi-Fi tethering and use the Wi-Fi at the same time. You cannot do that. It's not possible. As soon as you turn on the hotspot, the Wi-Fi will be disconnected. That's the kind of thing. So which is not possible in other uh, 30,000 mobile phones. So right now is another MI Linux device which I'm trying to do. If you try to turn on the portable hotspot, Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi tethering you can do at the same time. Not only in the MI Linux device, even in the iQ7 device, Realme X and Max, uh, OnePlus Nord 2, Poco F3 GT. So a lot of other phones, you can actually do that, but it's not possible in this Moto H20. That's the one thing which sort of uh, mentioning for you all in case if you're looking to buy this one. And next is regarding the display segment. Yes, regarding the display, there are small things which are bothering me. First is regarding the touch sampling rate. The touch sampling rate of this phone, by default, it's set to very low touch sampling rate. If you want to use high touch sampling rate, you need to, you will get the high touch sampling rate. Yes, if you, if you add the games into the game tool, 
and if you use the touch sensitivity button this option only then you will get the high touch sampling rate not right now i'm not getting any kind of high touch sampling rate but if i use the touch sensitivity then i'll get the high touch sampling rate as you can see this is the thing with the moto h20 complete ui is not optimized for the higher touch sampling rate in this device that's a one uh, drawback so where is the poco f3 gt if you compare other phones i'm trying to compare in this segment only this phone complete ui is uh, working around 480 hertz uh, touch sampling rate 480 hertz whatever the company is climbing that's a thing only few phones will provide like this complete ui higher touch sampling rate like mi linux device and the poco f3 gt and other phones so these are kind of a little bit kind of set back here in this segment in terms of the display segment and next is also regarding the display if you try to choose the auto refresh rate let me try to show it will be restricted to only 120 hertz refresh rate only that's the one thing you cannot use 144 hertz if you try to choose the auto refresh rate that's one thing another thing about the display quality so which is of gorilla glass 3 production as you can see friends that's another uh, drawback for 30000 you're paying and you are getting the gorilla glass 3 production which is not that okay i would say friends for because it's a really huge investment i would say for this kind of price that's a kind of slightly disadvantage in terms of the display production that's uh, in 2021 come on so we should at least deserve gorilla glass 5 production that's a kind of drawback in the in this phone and not only that you don't get screen protection screen guard pre-installed from the device yes out of the box you don't get it all that's kind of completely i don't agree friends i'm not sure why the company would do like this so they did provide the case that's kind of good but at least they should provide some kind of uh, initial uh, transfer some kind of screen guard protection because un until we buy new one we should have some kind of protection for the screen that's that's another thing which i thought of addressing for you all so there is no screen art production so better to buy before you order that you, maybe after you order as soon as maybe along with the phone you can order the screen protection as well that's a kind of good thing to order that's the one thing and next there are a couple of other disadvantages which uh, definitely friends so you know i'm not talking about the battery because right now with the stock android ui experience in my usage i'm not seeing that much kind of huge training is happening at this moment because for the past, I am using this device for the past, I think, 12 hours continuously, 12 to 13 hours non-stop. This is my day one of usage, continuously without taking any kind of breaks I'm trying to use. And non-stop, as you can see the graph, how it is. I did do a lot of uh, Android benchmark test and a couple of benchmark results as well. And you can see how the graph is actually, and how is the screen time is going on screen on time. Non-stop I am trying to use. This is a complete stock Android experience. And most of the time I'll be using the live wallpapers and I did record a lot of videos as well using this device so overall battery is not a my problem but 3.5mm jack and maybe not having dual stereo speaker setup and another thing is about this uh, big bump about this phone so even though it has got the big bump because of the camera the camera should be really good if the cameras are not that great why we should have this kind of biggest bump i don't i cannot get that point that's another thing which uh, motors should deal with that so so finally friends, these are the few things which I am just addressing to you all. So in case if you are planning to buy the device, so make sure to stay tuned by subscribing to my channel and also don't forget to check the playlist for more information. The playlist will give you the clear idea what is going on with the Moto H20, whether to buy it or skip it. And these are the problems which I did face on the day one itself. I am trying to mention the problems first because you should know. Before buying the device, all the advantages and all the disadvantages you should know and you should your mind should prepare for that. After, buy, after you receive the phone, if you feel uncomfortable or if you feel any kind of issues, you can definitely return the phone or apply for replacement. Something like that, you can definitely do that. That is the reason I'll try to focus always on the issues, what is going on with the device. Because no one will cover the issues first. Because these are the things which should be addressed first to the consumers. Only then they'll understand what is happening with the device. So wait for my complete review friends tomorrow I'll try to update on the review as well so stay tuned for those videos in case if you're interested and let me know in the comment section below what are other things you want me to test on this device definitely I'll do my best to post the videos as soon as possible. So see you in the next video friends I'll see you in the next video for more updates meanwhile signing off and bye.